it's like wow <laughs> it's finally here it's been a been too long since we played football I just imagine to see a gold in the stadium and to see that again is going to be pretty awesome. I couldn't be more excited about this opportunity. I think we're in for a very special treat. And we're getting fired up for, for what's to come in, in 2021. I am excited to introduce the 33rd head football coach at Montana State, Mr. Brent Vegan. Hello everyone, I'm Ashley Washburn joined by John Miller and welcome to Return of the Cats. So much has changed within the program since the last time Montana State took the field and over the next 30 minutes we're going to break down everything that's happened and what's coming up for Bobcat football. That's right Ashley and to give a quick recap of the past 600 plus days have looked like for Montana State. Let's start with the cancellation of their 2020 season. From then until now, Jeff Chilt left the program to go to the University of Texas. Brent Vegan was hired as the new head coach, bringing with him a new staff and the Bobcats. They also have a new quarterback at the helm. And all of this change over the past year definitely showed up in the 2021 Big Sky preseason polls. MTN's Luke Shelton with where the Bobcats sit in those rankings. That's right, Ashley. In 2020, the Cats were tabbed to finish third in the conference, but on this year's coaches poll, they've fallen one spot down to fourth. They did receive one first place vote. At the top of the charts, Weber State, who won their first outright title this past spring season. You'll remember some Big Sky teams played earlier this year after the fall season was canceled. Not the best news for Cat fans, the Grizz sitting in that runner-up spot, and not much change in the media poll. The top four teams remain the same, but the only major difference is the Bobcats did secure three first place votes, as did Eastern Washington. John? Thanks, Luke. And the man who will be leading the Cats offense this fall, playing for hopefully the program's first Big Sky Championship since 2012, is junior transfer Matthew McKay. He hasn't played a game since late September of 2019 when he was with NC State, and it's safe to say he's ready to get back out on the field. It's like, wow, <laughs> it's finally here. Prepare for the moment. Um, just still got to keep working and preparing, but I'm definitely excited to get back on the field. The fall camp has been all about continuing to learn new head coach Brent Vegan's offense. Definitely feels good just going back in it. Um, I feel a lot better than I was in the spring about the offense, so just excited to keep going in it. It helps knowing that right behind him in the backfield is Bobcats 13th leading rusher in school history, Isaiah Fonse. Definitely excited in that whole running back room, especially Isaiah. Uh, they know how to run the ball really well, so I'm excited to see him play for sure. Vegan and offensive coordinator Taylor Housewright have lauded McKay for his leadership, an area the QB said he has stepped up even more this fall. Just being more vocal, uh, just encouraging guys. I think they really heard my voice this August for sure. The game against Wyoming is just a few days away, and after all the time off, McKay believes his team is ready. With all the COVID, the canceled season, the canceled spring season, and this great summer we just had in spring, I think, we're definitely ready for the moment. Most players have lofty goals. McKay's are pretty simple. Just execute the game plan and lead this team to a lot of wins. And besides offensive coordinator Taylor Housewright saying the team will continue to run the ball like in years past, not one offensive player will say anything on what the offense will look like this year. But we'll see it against Wyoming coming up soon. And with Matt McKay getting the starting job for week one, that makes team captain Tucker Rovick the backup. It's a change from 2019, but as the vet would tell you, sometimes change can be good. It's definitely been a year that is one to remember with COVID and everything kind of threw everybody for a loop, but it's been good. I would say everybody on this team's gotten really close, um, comfortable with each other, and it's that's kind of been one of the blessings with like the whole COVID-19 season. Since taking the reins of Montana State's offense in 2019, the six foot five quarterback has been the Bobcats guy. He knew the playbook like the back of his hand, but none of that mattered anymore with an entirely new coaching staff this spring. I've really appreciated Coach Vegan's input and then Coach Housewright's spot just something new to the table that I just haven't really had in the OC or QB coach before. I spent four seasons of playing the exact same offense and now it's just a little bit different. So it's been nice to have a little bit of tweaks and learn something new. While learning the new playbook this past spring with Brent Vegan at the helm, there was also a healthy competition brewing with NC State transfer Matt McKay. 
It's been a healthy competition. It's been a good one. I know last year in 2019, I was always talking about how Casey Baum and I, even though we were competing, we're best friends. It's literally the same thing with Matt. Casey and I were all good buddies. It's been a healthy and good, fun competition. Matt was given the starting role at the end of spring ball with Tucker listed as the backup. And while that may not be the title he held in 2019, he will still take the field as a captain this fall. That's definitely something that I pride myself in is just being a good leader, both like vocally and non-verbally. It's a great title to have, but I will say there's a lot of guys on this team that deserve that title as well. Like This is fifth year, and I've not seen the leadership as good as it's ever been. And to keep with the theme of quarterbacks, MTN's Luke Shelton caught up with Butte's Tommy Mallott, who has already been a fan favorite since joining the team last year. That's right, Ashley. While Mallott may be the Bobcats' youngest signal caller sitting behind three quarterbacks, he's still looking to make an impact this fall, even if it's not on offense. I think that it's just kind of a blue collar mentality of just consistency. You know, every day just coming in with that same mindset, you know, just to grow and to get better. When it comes to the concept of Butte Tough, Tommy Malott exemplifies it. As a Butte High senior quarterback, Malott was named the Class AA MVP and Montana Gatorade Player of the Year following the 2019 season in which the Bulldogs advanced to the state championship. Now a freshman pre-med student with the Bobcats, Malott is working to find his place at the Division I level, wherever his team needs him. Obviously a huge change. I've never really done special teams before, but I've been doing some fundamental rotation, working on tackling and all those things. And so, you know, trying to find somewhere that I'm valuable for again, wherever that may be, just trying to find anywhere that I'm uh, valuable for the team. Malott now joins a proud line of Butte natives who have gone on to suit up for the Bobcats. He's looking to carry on the success of past Mining City generations while setting an example for those of the future. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of history from uh, Butte going to MSU, you know, I'm trying to be a figure for, you know, younger students or aspiring uh, student athletes. Among the Butte to MSU pipeline is Malott's high school coach, Ari Gray, who has a great explanation for what makes Malott such an exceptional player. He's a sponge. You know, he just wants to learn, and, he, and he's going to try to learn whatever it may be, and he's going to do anything in his power to help out his program and, and help out his school and his university. You know, I respect that guy so much, and I still talk to him to this day. I text him all the time and call him, and he always reaches out to me, check, checking in on how I'm doing. And, you know, I remember watching some videos on Twitter when he was being interviewed like this and making fun of him about it. So. It, it is, uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm going to have to bring that up to him later today. With three quarterbacks ahead of him on the depth chart, Malott knows the best thing he can do right now is to learn as much as he can from them and continue studying the game. You know, obviously I, I wasn't going to come in and, and start over three guys that have had experience, but I, I'm just trying to work on, you know, film and understanding the game a little bit better and, and just being, just progressing, you know, as much as I possibly can. It'll be great to see a Butte native, especially one who's as talented as Tommy Malott, on the field for the Cats this season. Make sure to stick around because there's still more to come in our Return of the Cats special, including an exclusive interview with Montana State's new head coach, Brent Vegan. And does the last name Tuliasa Soko ring a bell? We'll hear from a senior offensive lineman about his deep family ties in the game of football. That and more coming up next.
Welcome back to the return of the Cats. MTN Sports in-depth look at the Bobcats 2021 season. Tuyasa Sopo is a name many recognize in the game of football, whether it be at the college or NFL level. Montana State offensive lineman Taylor Tuyasa Sopo has been a stalwart for the Cats, but it took him quite some time to feel as though he lived up to his last name. Hey. It's always been a lot of pressure on me since I was young, being, you know, two Yasa Sopo family name. Football wasn't the main focus for the MSU offensive lineman in high school. It took a significant knee injury for him to consider playing the sport. I boxed and I did basketball, so I think when I got hurt, getting a lot of weight, I was like, you know what, I should try this football thing that, you know, my whole family does. Even after he started playing football in high school, Tuyasa Sopo had off the field issues that hindered his recruiting. Jeff Choate and his staff at Montana State wanted to give him a chance with the Bobcats program. Despite bigger schools offering, the lineman chose to remain with MSU. Having guys like, you know, Coach Tafalele, Coach Choate, Coach Armstrong early on in my career helped me on in a now they really help lighten the load, I guess. But with his last name comes pressure. His family ties into the game of football run deep. He's cousins with former Washington quarterback Marcus Tuiasa Sopo and Steelers wide receiver Juju Smith Schuster. His father Titus played for USC. Constantly hearing, you know, like media talk, well, you know, uh, like his family, his dad went to USC. For me, it was like, all right, I'm gonna prove myself. With preseason All Big Sky honors, Tuiasa Sopo has felt he has worked to a point in his career where he's living up to those high expectations that come with his last name. Without leaving his hometown of Lancaster, California, he would have never been in this position. That's the best thing I ever did for me here, was coming here and just, you know, getting out of the fast paced life. This has opened up my eyes, not to just what I was currently going through, but, you know, what I could, like, possibly get a chance to, you know, the life I could live. And this season, the senior is playing for his father, Titus. Last October, he passed away, but not without letting Taylor know how proud of him he was. It was really touching because uh, one of my last conversations with him was, you know, he's just really proud of how far I came. And, you know, just to hear him say how proud he was of me. So, you know, it's something I'm going to hold on to. But, uh, you know, it's an everyday battle when you lose a parent. And, you know, I, uh, I never really understood that until it happened. There's moments in Taylor's last season he knows will be hard. Moments he was supposed to share with his dad. I have certain dates that are kind of circled on that are going to be a little harder for me, but uh, you know, he's always with me. With losing a year due to COVID-19, the offensive lineman is ready to show the world why his dad was proud of him. You know, I feel like I've been planting seeds and just to finally see all my seeds starting to grow and my work starting to you know, be noticed has been pretty cool. With those seeds growing, the guard feels as though the next level is within reach. You know, we get overlooked at at this division, but um, you know, I just believe put in what I put on film, like go let it do the rest of me. Tuiasa Sopo prides himself on being the nastiest player on the field, and that mentality helps the offensive line be one of the best in the FCS. They will need that nastiness next week at Wyoming. And speaking of preseason watch list, Tuiasa Sopo wasn't the only one who made the list. No surprise linebacker Troy Anderson also got the nod, and to keep the accolades going, he was even one of the 35 FCS standouts to be named to the Buck Buchanan Award preseason watch list. And speaking of linebackers, Callahan O'Reilly led Montana State in tackles in 2019. And now, in new defensive coordinator Freddie Banks' defense, he'll be paired right next to All-American Troy Anderson, which could make them one of the top inside linebacker duos in all of the FCS. I think it'll be awesome, you know, playing alongside a guy like Troy. Obviously, he's always fun. Someone who's fast, smart, athletic. Anderson being placed at the Mike linebacker will be the focal point of new coordinator Freddie Banks' defense. We got our best leader on defense making all the checks and really being the focal point of how we operate on defense. He's going to be closing the defense. He's going to be making sure we're on point. And that's him. I mean, he's, he's Bobcat through and through. I think I'm, I'm closer to the action, really close to the line of scrimmage, and hopefully I'll be able to impact the run a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a challenge, but Callahan played Mike last year and he's sliding over to Will and he's been awesome to help me. O'Reilly played the Mike before, but as Anderson alluded, he's making the switch to Will. It's really similar. You know, we got two inside linebackers. Our jobs are pretty similar. So I played Mike in spring ball. So now getting to play Will now, I'll get to have a better feel for both of them, which will be really good. He's just old school linebacker. Put him in a box, tell him what to do, and he goes get the job done. He likes doing the dirty work, so me and Callahan get along well. Anderson and O'Reilly are pretty close, with O'Reilly now helping the All-American make the switch to his former position. Where to place my eyes and then just kind of like little stance things on when to cheat th when to cheat out or when to cheat in, and little tells at the tight ends or O-linemen that will give it away. 
that he's kind of just passed along that you probably wouldn't know unless somebody tells you. Punch the ball out here, scoop, give it back to the next guy in line. With the change in some of the coaches since Brent Vegan took over the team, both players are ecstatic to have linebackers coach Bobby Daly remain with the team. Just a real players coach, super knowledgeable. You go to him and ask him about anything, whether it be football or life, and he has he has words of wisdom and advice for you. With Anderson back out on the field, the coaches and players are excited to see what the healthy linebacker can do just playing on the defensive side of the ball. You'll be going after tackling, you see a guy flying right out in front of you, it's like, oh, here comes Troy. Like, you know, he's the same as he's always been, flying to the ball, so it'll be fun to watch. He means so much to this team just beyond his ability. It's, uh, it's hard to quantify. Anderson isn't thinking about what comes next. He told me he will talk about his post Bobcat playing days after the season. Still coming up on MTN's Return of the Cats, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with head coach Brent Vegan, previewing the Bobcats season opener against his former team. Welcome back to Return of the Cats. This past February, Montana State welcomed the 33rd head coach to the program. Brent Vegan previously spent time at the University of Wyoming as an offensive coordinator, which happens to be the team Montana State is opening their season against. I sat down with him earlier this week to preview the game and the season. Coach, some would say that it's been a very long off season, nearly two years for the Cats, but we've kind of finally gotten to the point where we can almost say that it's game week. Where's the team sitting at as you guys finish fall camp up? I think good. I think you know, really hungry to play. It has been, you know, December of 19. I, I think the the shift with the staff kind of created a new start though back in February. So we, I think we're more in that mode of February on with this team and this coaching staff. But I think our preparation throughout the summer was was what we needed and into this point in fall camp. I have been really pleased with you know where we're going and you know uh, what we've done at this point. And speaking of coaching staff, this program has gone through a lot of change over the past year. New head coach, new coordinators, new schemes. How has the coaching staff gelled together over the past couple months? I think very well. You know, I, I think the blend of, of bringing in three assistants initially, including both coordinators and ultimately a fourth. It's, it's challenging, I know, and guys are getting to, to know each other, both within the work environment, but then, you know, outside of that too, and I think that takes time, but I think both sides, the guys that have been here, the guys that were new, very open-minded, and I think everybody has in common, they want the Bobcats to be the very best. And if we kind of keep on with that theme of change, you guys have a new quarterback that's taking the reins of Montana State's offense this fall. What have you specifically seen from Matt McKay's game that has impressed you the most? Well, I think in, in spring, you know, we were able to see the array of his ability. You know, Matt has good feet, and he's able to make plays with his legs, but he threw the ball you know, quite well in the spring. And, and I think picked things up pretty well for the first time around. And then what you saw in the summer is him taking the critique from the spring. And I think he had a really good summer on, on both ends. And then also get with our guys from a player-led perspective and lead them. That's allowed him this fall to look like a different player than he was in the spring. I trust that he's got the ability to keep getting better throughout the fall. And that's really what we need. 
You know, most of your coaching career, you've kind of spent it in a controlled environment up in the press box. But now as a head coach, you'll be on the sidelines this fall. How have you kind of been mentally preparing yourself for that transition? Yeah, I've, I haven't been on the field since 2004 um, and only one year prior to that. I think for me, diving in, so to speak, on both sides of football, special teams included in that, and, and really, you know, formulating those complete game thoughts as opposed to being so focused on one side of the football, so focused on calling plays. And I think that was helpful for me to be in a controlled environment, but when it comes to doing the whole job, I mean, being on the field is obviously the place to be. I, I look forward to being able to engage face to face with our players, having communication with our coaches. I'm sure it'll be a learning experience, but, uh, you know, I think I'm ready for it. Absolutely. And, you know, looking ahead to that season opener against Wyoming, this will be your first game as Montana State's head coach. But against your former team, what extra layers does that add for you? There's so much respect between Coach Bowl and myself that, you know, I, I don't even know how to really put that into words. But I think at the same time, he's going to put his team out there in the best position that they feel like they can win, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm excited for our guys. That's the biggest thing. Not only is it their first opportunity to play football in a long, long time, but that opportunity to play against an FBS program, it's a once-in-a-season opportunity for them. You've spent months physically preparing for this first game, but, you know, asking you, how have you been preparing yourself emotionally a little bit? Because when you picture yourself taking those first couple steps onto the field in War Memorial Stadium, what do you imagine? Well, you know, I, I think it'll be an excitement taking it all in. And I, I think part of that is a sense of pride that will come from coaching such a fine program like Montana State. I think playing there, it's going to be a charged up environment and, you know, excited for our guys. And I, I'm sure there'll be a lot of emotions walking out there. But if we're prepared and like I said, if we're in full belief that we can go in there, that's the biggest thing that I have on my plate. Thank you so much for your time, Coach, and good luck against Wyoming. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. And since he can't be up in the press box this fall, he brought in offensive coordinator Taylor Housewright this year to be his eyes in the sky. That's right, Ashley. Housewright has had the chance to learn from quite a few great offensive minds. While at Ashland University, he played and learned under Green Bay Packers head coach Matt LaFleur. As a coach, he's been influenced by minds like offensive coordinator Joe Moorhead at Oregon and Brent Vegan while they were at Wyoming. Those are just a few names. So I take a little bit from all those guys. Every situation's different, every kid's different, so you try to pick and choose and remember back situations that you heard on coaching the quarterback and lessons you need to teach them. Fans should expect a drastic change in what they're going to see now that House Wright has the reins of the offense. He describes it as fun, fast, and physical. And this program has won with running the football and it's going to continue to win with running the football. And I think we were eighth in the country last year, first in this conference. And in order to win a conference championship, you got to be able to run the ball, and we're going to run the ball. The guy running that offense will be quarterback Matthew McKay. There's nobody that's going to study harder than him. He's going to prepare himself and make sure he knows what's going on, and he makes decisions quickly and can think quickly. And I think his leadership is growing. You know, guys follow him. He's got a little bit of a swag to him, I guess you could say, but uh, um, he's a great human being. He's, got, he's had great parents. Um, and I think that shows in the field and his decision making. This is the first time House Wright has been a coordinator, and with a lot more control, he's learned to have more patience. Got to have patience. You know, I try to coach guys hard and create chaos in practice, and because the game, you're not out there. You know what I mean? And uh, but at the same time, you want confidence. Having most of the offensive staff remain through the coaching change has made it a smooth transition for the offensive coordinator. They've made life so much easier, and, and understanding that. It starts with me, you know what I mean? All the blame comes to me. We don't play well, it's on me. And, and trying to have a group and build chemistry where everybody feels like they're a part of it um, and try to use a little bit from everybody's experience to create something. Although House Wright will be calling plays for the Bobcats, he made sure to let me know it's Brent Vegan's offense and what he says goes. And we're not done just yet. Coming up next, we'll hear from Montana State's athletic director about what this year's gold rush will look like if there will be any COVID restrictions in place.
Here's a look at Montana State's full schedule for this fall. This Saturday, they'll kick off their season against the Cowboys before making the trip back home for their home opener and Gold Rush game against Drake on September 11th. They'll hit the road to Ogden in October to play against the reigning Big Sky champions on October 16th. But here's the date you'll want to mark on your calendars. Cat Grizz on November 20th. That game will be played in Missoula, and who knows, maybe a conference championship will be on the line. And looking ahead to that home opener against Drake University, Montana State is pulling out all the stops for this year's Gold Rush since this will be the first time fans have packed Bobcat Stadium in 638 days. I think we're in for a very special treat and you know we haven't played in what 17 18 months and for having to be gold rush on September 11th I think it's truly going to be one of those special nights that people will remember for a long long time to kick the festivities off Montana State will be holding a grand opening of their 18 million dollar Bobcat athletic complex this state-of-the-art facility will be the new home for Bobcat football this fall which will be open to the public for tours during the morning of gold rush we were talking about how we enter the field because it's going to be a little bit different than in years past instead of coming out from the side they're coming out from right the middle underneath the goalpost. We're excited about the subtle changes that it's going to bring, but also the sheer excitement that building will bring, not only now and on game days, but into the future. And with the home opener being held on September 11th this year, Montana State will be unveiling a field-size American flag to honor all active military first responders and veterans. It's expected to be another gold rush sellout, so you'll want to get your tickets fast. We only have about 500 tickets left for the entire game. And to be honest, as we look down the list of our games, there's probably three games right now that are on target to be sold out here very, very quickly. But I think the remaining three will go very quickly thereafter as well. And even though Montana State is now encouraging masks on campus this fall, Costello says there are no restrictions in place at Bobcat Stadium. We always talk about in our department getting off to a great start in the fall. And what a great start it will be to sell out Bobcat Stadium, show our student athletes that, hey, you know what, our fans have missed you and they're ready to come back and support you in a big, big way. Costello says this is the fastest he's seen games nearly sell out for the Bobcats, so make sure you grab your tickets sooner than later if you're hoping to make it to a game this fall. That wraps up our look at the return of the Cats for the 2021 season. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be following the Bobcats all season long, so make sure to stay up to date with us right here and on MontanaSports.com. We'll see you at the home opener for Gold Rush against Drake University on September 11th.